All right, so uh, I am working on some homebrew stuff and was thinking about, so originally when I was trying to design my world, some of the stuff I didn't put a ton of thought into because it really just started off as a game and how I was going to do it. I always said, hey, you guys can use whatever deities you want from whatever setting. It could be real real, real world deities, Greek mythology, Norse, religion, like Odin, stuff like that. It could be whatever you want. Forgotten Realms, Greyhawk. I, I didn't care what the deities were. But uh, the idea that I had originally was that all magic kind of just comes from the stars, basically. And that explains spells per day for 5th edition. Um... But I didn't think about things like how common is magic, how does it affect your economy, uh, how do people use it in everyday culture, um, how rare is it, what, is, what are some of the most powerful spells in the world, uh, are there rituals that cults can do that could like strum up the power of a nuclear bomb and wipe off a whole continent from the planet. Like None of this stuff remotely crossed my mind. Um, it was just that, oh, we'll just use it how it is mechanically, and we'll just hand wave really where it comes from. Uh, and you guys can make it up for your character, so it's it's whatever you want. Um, you know, and that, but behind the scenes, it was in my mind, it was just that it's all just astrology based, and even clerics, it's still based on that. It's just they believe it comes from gods, which is why they have the spells they have, and druids believe it comes from nature. Um, and that's why their spells are that way. But really, the the innate spell casting is from the star. So anybody, in theory, could be a spell caster. It's just not everybody knows how to harness it, because it's not easy. Um, but yeah, I didn't put a lot of thought into things like uh, the economy and, you know, how, how rare, how truly rare is it if, you know, if the world believes it's based on, like, faith-based well then why aren't churches running the world and in, in charge of everything if it's knowledge-based why are wizards not running the world you know if you know if there's enough warlock based spellcasters why why aren't these things that they have packs with running the world like all sorts of things like that that i just didn't put a lot of thought into sorcerers again it's they believe they're born with it, and why are they not running the world? You know, just all sorts of things. So, and these are things that I think are really important. You know, in hindsight, and I think it's important to be able to describe the magic, how it works in a manner that is reasonable for the world. Obviously, we're talking about fantasy settings. So, you can't expect it to be flawless 100%. Like, there's going to be holes. There's holes in every single fantasy setting um, but you have to be able to suspend disbelief. There has to be plausible deniability. <laughs> you know, you have to be able to, like, stretch it into what you think, you know, can make sense for most people. Um, but ultimately, you'll be able to pick holes in it. So that's something I'm debating for my world overview right now. Because um, I've been putting a lot of thought into that tonight. I'm going to do a world overview. Um, so in order to do that, I need to really, there's going to be a lot of tweaks throughout this. I already know that, but, um, based on the way I answer these questions, it could change certain things about my setting, which isn't a bad thing. Uh, it wouldn't change anything that's happened in my games. It wouldn't change anything necessarily that I have planned. Um, but I feel like it has to fit based on what I've done so far. Uh, which is reasonable. I haven't had anything too crazy. Um, some some other things that kind of come up are uh, resurrection spells. Um, can anyone be resurrected? Are there consequences to it? Uh, what about just raising the dead in general? Is that easy to do? Is that common? Um, you know, all these things can affect... A world drastically uh, medicine if you get your arm cut off does a cure wound spell put it back um, mending cantrips you know if, if you have a lot of people who know how to do a mending cantrip like they can make bank off of that as a profession in almost any city if you were to think about that 
Like, if I could do that in real life, like, all day long, repeatedly, I'd be rich. <laughs> like, no questions asked. So, these are things that are really important. And, you know, if you like high magic settings, high fantasy, uh, I think that magic should have a drastic effect on, every, on everyone's day-to-day -day life. If you're playing with the idea that it's more rare, maybe it doesn't have as big of an impact on day-to-day -day life. Hmm. Excuse me. I'm probably going somewhere in the middle there. You know, it, I, I'm not 100% sure yet, but I'm going to try and figure that out in the next day or so about my setting. Um, I've always... I, my setting started playing when I started playing Pathfinder. And then it was fifth edition so that's where my setting is from it's what it's based off of and so i think whatever i decide is going to have to be able to do both of those systems in some way shape or form um that might you know for example there's gunslingers in pathfinder i don't think i've had a gunslinger in any of my games um i've hinted at the technology being possible somewhere in my world um, but I, I think in order to do that, I have to make the materials for that extremely rare. Uh, it's something I might not allow. It's something that I might actually not have in my setting, to be honest. Um, but I have things like alchemist fire and explosives. I do have those, um, you know, but they're from alchemists. They're, they're made by alchemists. Alchemists are rare. Uh, because of the knowledge needed. Basically, the way I see alchemists are extremely smart. Um, they they know how to follow a recipe. They also are willing to put themselves in harm's way to experiment. But they also didn't dabble in magic. Whereas most smart people who are like that would have went into magic rather than alchemy. Um, so, th again, alchemists are extremely rare in my study. Wizards... They're a little, not necessarily common, because they're still not. They're very rare. Uh, most really large cities have a couple, maybe one or two. Um, but other than that, I mean, they're rare. In fact, most wizards like to go and live off in peace and quiet. Uh, and, you know, the fact that they know magic is a nice defensive thing. Um, but they just have an interest in arcane stuff, being able to do different things. Most of them aren't doing it to fight or to defend people or anything like that. They're just doing it because of an interest and they're just naturally smart. And it's like one of the highest things they can research, one of the hardest things they can research. So they do that. Um, so really the smart people in my setting usually go on to either be scholars, sages, uh, alchemists or wizards. And, um, you know, they're all, I would say equally rare. So something to think about. That's one question I can for sure answer about my, my setting. Um, so there's that. Uh, what else? Clerics are a little more common. Most only use their, their magic for religious reasons. Most aren't ex adventurers or explorers or anything like that. Um, in fact, most clerics never surpass first level. They're just... You know, and then a lot of people who are trying to be clerics don't ever actually learn how to do it, or in some of their opinions get bestowed the magical abilities, so they just stay priests or acolytes, um, or just holy men in general. Uh, some clerics keep it a secret, uh, and for many reasons. Um, sometimes clerics get sent to other places in my setting, uh, but yeah. Sorcerers, I uh, believe they're born with it. Usually they are, like, in some way, shape, or form, they do resemble a, a family member. So there is some truth to the fact that you're born with your magical abilities. Um, and you do tend to take on traits from your parents and things like that. Uh, so sorcerers, you know, you have the dragon and the tempest and um, wild magic and things like that. Uh, sorcerers are, again really rare. In fact, spellcasters in general are rare. Clerics are probably the more common. Uh, druids aren't very common. Paladins are probably pretty common. 
Um, but again, they serve the church. They don't serve usually a nation or a city state or anything like that. Uh, they usually will serve the church uh, or at least their church's code. Um, so that's kind of how I view that. Bards are actually fairly common in my setting. Um, most of them are bards to make money. They, and again, I'm just going based off of 5th edition stuff, but they do it for money, entertainment purposes. They all go to a bard college to, to learn the trades. Um, you know, so there's that. Uh, there's also, um, <laughs> that's funny. Uh, there's also, um, let's see, Eldritch Knights. Uh, I wouldn't, I haven't pinpointed how many of them there are. I would say that's extremely rare. Uh, and then you have, what else? Rogue Arcane Tricksters. Again, it's kind of secretive as to how many there actually are, but they're pretty rare as well. Uh, so that pretty much covers all the spellcaster classes. Um, you know, I, I like the idea of keeping something like that pretty rare in my setting. Um, because I feel like it makes it easier to explain the other things. And and on top of that, if, if you have too many extraordinary people in your setting, it makes your adventuring heroes, your you know, your player characters a little less impactful when they have special abilities. And I'm somebody who really likes the idea of epics, who really likes the idea of your characters being true heroes. Um, so Uh, so that's that's part of the reason I want my setting to be this way, um, you know. But in general, I mean, the the character classes are more rare than common people. I mean, that it just has to be that way. Um, you know, you might have barbarians leading barbarian type tribes, but those tribes don't have all the abilities of barbarians. They're just more savage, less primitive, uh, or less civilized. Uh, is the word I'm going for. So, you know, so you have a barbarian that's leading a barbarian tribe that's really just less civilized people using very historic and primitive ancient weaponry and things like that. So, um, so yeah, that's what you got. But, uh, yeah, so I don't know. So I guess the whole point of this, though, is to think about how magic impacts your world. Um, you have a lot of questions to answer if you're doing some, some world building, um, I am not, I'm hoping to get it like defined a lot better in the next couple days um, because I want to get, my, my goal this week is to have my overview of my world written up. Um, I don't have a good map yet. I'll try and draw something up, um, probably just with the, at least the, the country lines and maybe some, the mountains, um, but it'll be a, a rough mock of it um, to go along with my overview and I'll just make it a quick PDF that I can throw up online and then put it up in the Master of the Game Facebook group if you're interested. Uh, you should be able to download it hopefully in the next week. So I'm thinking maybe like 10 pages including a map so 11 pages. Um, again it's just an overview, nothing too fancy. Um, talk about the different nations um, and some quick history and bullet points and stuff like that. Um, maybe it'll be more. It depends. If I get on a roll and really am enjoying writing it, I might write more. I'm really excited to dive into my setting specific regions um, and go more into depth there. But uh, I was talking to some people and they said they would like an overview first to get an idea or a feel for the world, the differences of the different um, nations and things like that, and then a nice world map. Um, so I'm going to do that. I have at least a rough draft up this week. So that's the idea, and if people want to offer feedback, I'll definitely take it. Um, I'll probably put some stuff in there about some of the heroes that have went through my world in different areas. Put a little couple blurbs about some of the factions in there. But again, it's going to be a general overview. It won't be too in depth, but I'm hoping to give enough to keep it to, to still keep interest. Um, so if you got any input, please let me know in the comments below. If you want to talk about your own world building, that's cool too. So. That's it, and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Hope you guys are enjoying yourselves. Go check out Master the Game on Facebook. It's a group. I also have a page for it. Uh, the group is where I post normally 
uh, at least once or twice a day. Um, we have some good conversations over there usually, and um, it's I would say it's fairly active for for a small amount of us, but some pretty good activity going on there. So thank you, and I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.